interested in learning more about becoming a credentialed climate change professional, this video will give you an overview of the Certified Climate Change Professional, or CCP, credential, uh, as well as its relationship with other ACO credentials. So, so ACO credentials have been established to bestow recognition of capabilities in leading and implementing climate change strategies for three target audiences. We're looking at climate change and adaptation practitioners, sustainability, environment, and corporate responsibility professionals, and professionals across numerous other occupations that intersect with climate change. These can be folks who are energy managers, supply chain and procurement professionals, civil engineers, architects, and public health professionals, just to name a few. Now looking at the program structure, the CCP, the Certified Climate Change Professional, is the core credential in this program. Uh, it is the first that has opened up. It's designed for mid-level practitioners with two to four years of experience at a minimum working on climate change related initiatives. It's also a stepping stone and a requirement for the Certified Climate Change Officer credential which will unveil either late 2017 or in early 2018. The CCP requirements also will support many of the requirements that would be issued for corresponding credentials for other occupations, which we'll also unveil later this year. So these are credentials that we are designing in collaboration with peer credentialing bodies and experts in those fields in order to facilitate integration of climate-related competencies into those professions that have significant responsibilities or should have significant responsibilities in climate preparedness and action planning. Lastly, there's the Certified Climate Change Officer, the CCO. This credential is designed for senior level executives with seven to 10 years of experience leading and driving climate related initiatives in their organizations. In order to earn the CCO, you will have needed to satisfy the requirements for the CCP or an occupation specific credential along the way. So it's a good thing to get started in this program now so that you've satisfied a number of the requirements for the CCO when we unveil them next year. Now, as far as earning the CCP goes, we've established four exams that you have to pass in order to earn the CCP. The four exam modules are Climate Science and Vulnerability Assessment, GHG Energy and Water Management, Governance Law and Policy, and Materiality Risk Management and Economics. In addition to those four exams, you also need to do 14 total hours of electives with an orientation towards three and a half hours focused on geographic region, three and a half hours towards sector specific training, three and a half hours towards professional function or occupation specific training, and the remaining time can be spent on any topic or orientation. Now, if training for a specific category is not available, then that category will roll into a general training requirement. Once you've earned the CCP, Continuing education requirements are minimum of eight hours per year with periodic updates to certain competencies and a usage requirement of 40 hours per year. Now there's also a set of experience requirements in order to earn the CCP. If you have a master's or postgraduate degree, you need to have two or more years working extensively on climate change, sustainability, or related initiatives. If you have a four-year degree but not a master's or postgraduate degree, then that re experience requirement bumps up to four plus years. And if you don't have a college degree, then you need seven plus years working extensively on climate change, sustainability, or related initiatives. Now, if we come back to the exam modules, the exa here's the information that will help you understand what, what is going to be tested in each of those four exams. So the climate science and vulnerability assessment exam looks at your understanding of climate science and your capacity to conduct vulnerability assessments and or inform your organizational or regional decision making with critical resources. The recommended prep materials are, are covered by our Climate 101, 103, and 201 courses. However, you're not required to take these courses or you're not required to take them with us. Uh, so you are welcome to prepare for the exam as you see fit. If you use our recommended prep materials, you'll find that this course takes about six to seven hours to prepare for, and the estimated exam time is roughly 40 minutes. The GHG Energy and Water Management exam 
looks at your grasp of greenhouse gas accounting related reporting and the role of greenhouse gas emissions and natural resource management in an organization's operations. This exam takes seven to eight hours of prep time if you're leveraging our materials and an estimated exam time of 45 minutes. These two exams are now open for testing today. The Governance Law and Policy exam will be the next one that will open in March, mid-March 2017. It tests your comprehension of fundamentals of organizational change and stakeholder engagement best practices, as well as an understanding of the current international and North American climate policy landscapes. This has an estimated prep time of about six to seven hours. Uh, the Materiality Risk Management and Economics exam will be the last of the four exams to open for testing. This exam evaluates your understanding of materiality considerations and your capacity to implement climate risk management practices. Additionally, it gauges your awareness of the economic implications of climate change and your ability to account for opportunities and risks in decision making. This course, this exam will take roughly seven to eight hours to prepare for. So these are your four CCP exam modules. Now, as far as satisfying the elective requirements, all elective courses must have a clear set of learning objectives covered under the scope or relating to the core competencies for climate change officers and professionals. You can learn more or read the core competencies framework on the ACO website. What we want to make sure is with the electives is that you don't take courses that are redundant to what we cover in the tests. So electives can be taken at any time before, during, and after, but they can't have the subject matter that we're testing you for. You'll have a two-year time period to complete those electives. And if we're looking at satisfying those elective hours, you have three paths before you. The first is you can leverage ACO coursework, uh, both through our online library and our in-person training offerings. These include live online and online on-demand programming, as well as our in-person training, such as our Climate Fundamentals Academies. Now, in addition to ACO's offerings, ACO is working with a group of institutions in order to accredit them and offer you an accredited provider network. Any institution or event that has been accredited by ACO has been pre-screened and pre-approved, at which point you don't have to wonder whether or not that offering will satisfy elective requirements, though you may want to consult ACO to see if it satisfies a specific subset of your requirements. You are welcome to leverage ACO accredited providers and taking courses through them will be just as easy to demonstrate satisfaction of the requirement as through ACO. Now, if you don't want to go through ACO or an accredited provider, but you want to leverage other third-party institutions, you are welcome to do so. Uh, we will accept some submissions from third-party institutions. However, the onus will be on you as the applicant for the credential to provide us with sufficient documentation reflecting the provider, the venue, the date, the content, the instructors. Uh, and we will reserve the right to decline any training that doesn't meet our guidelines for relevance and or rigor. Now, if you're wondering about the cost of this, we've developed two approaches that we think will make the price of earning the credential very reasonable and efficient. The first is you can purchase the exam and application bundle, which gives you access to all four exams, which can be taken up to three times in a year. It includes the application fee for the credential, but in this particular instance, leaves you responsible for securing your own prep materials and electives. The rates are as follows here and discounted with our partner organizations or for ACO existing general members. Now, if you're not a member of ACO, but you want to leverage ACO's training in order to prepare you for the exams and satisfy elective requirements, you might want to consider ACO Premium Membership. ACO Premium Membership is a higher level of, of our basic individual membership category. And what that does is it gives you access to the exams and the application fee. And all of our members already get access to live online and on-demand training as a complimentary benefit. It also gives you discounts on in-person training that we offer around the country. Uh, the last benefit of premium membership is that it gives you a six-month extension to your first year of membership. We actually really want you to join the ACO community of practice and not just do the credential. So we've actually made it cheaper for you to join as a premium member and earn the credential. 
So the first year, which gets a six-month extension, giving you 18 months, will run you $420 as a government professional and $490 for all other sectors. After that 18-month period, your renewal rate will be $125 a year for government professionals and $195 for non-government professionals. Now, once you've earned your CCP, we do have that combination of continuing education and demonstrated usage that I mentioned earlier. Continuing education requires the completion of a minimum of eight hours courses, um, and there may be those periodic refresh requirements that I mentioned, uh, which could orient towards climate science, policy changes, new accounting standards and practices. On the usage front, we want you to make a contribution to the community of climate practitioners through a minimum of 40 hours of service. This can be satisfied through speaking at public events, conducting research, developing training programs for internal and external stakeholders, convening community or working groups, getting involved in advocacy efforts, authoring materials. Uh, we'll have specific usage guidelines published in spring or summer of 2017. So what do you say? Are you ready to start your path towards becoming a certified climate change professional today? Learn more and sign up at www.acoonline.org.